So chapter 17, we are moving our attention to a different kind of long-term liability that organizations have, and that is pensions. So <clears throat> um, some of the details that we learned about in chapters 14 and 15, specifically as it relates to um, doing the present value of future cash flows, those kinds of things will be applied again here when it comes to pensions because a pension um, essentially is a future cash flow that an employer is promising to their employee. And so some of what we do um, as it relates to pensions is going to um, take into consideration those calculations that we were doing in both chapter 14 with bonds and chapter 15 with leases um, when we were taking those future cash flows and, and doing the present value to sort of bring them back to today. So before we get into that detail, this first, um, this first video is just going to be kind of an introduction to what is a pension, what, is a, um, what does it entail, and then again, a brief overview of two different general categories of pensions that organizations will typically choose from in terms of um, uh, what they want to offer to their employees. So again, a pension plan is um, essentially just a, 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 a way to provide income to an employee once they have retired. So during their retirement period, pension plans are the source of income that those retired employees would have. Um, generally speaking, the way that this is done is by setting aside funds while the person is currently working and then when they get to their retirement age, when they're ready to retire, there should be an accumulation of those funds that had been set aside plus earnings that were um, that, you know, if, if you set aside funds, you're not shoving it under a mattress. You're putting it into um, an investment fund so that it can earn interest and returns. So. The whole idea behind this is that over the period that the employee is working, they are earning this retirement benefit. They're earning it while they're working. And so those funds are set aside. And again, we're gonna talk about two different categories of, um, of pension plans here in a second, but just generally those funds are gonna be set aside. And the hope is that they can be put into some type of investment account, investment fund, so that they can generate additional returns, interest, income, um, so that when the employee is ready to retire, there's this fund that has an accumulation of income in it that can then be distributed to that person over the period of time that they are retired. So why would an organization want to do, offer these kinds, of, um, these kinds of retirement benefits to their employees? Well, it provides the employees with a degree of security. So they feel as though, you know, they're working and they're working towards, um, you know, this retirement period. And once they hit that retirement age, there's security in knowing that there's going to be, a, you know, income that, that is going to be distributed to them during their retirement. Um, companies also use this, you know, really as part of their benefits package. So when they're trying to recruit or retain um, talent within their organization, it is, a, you know, a, a really great selling point to discuss the types of retirement plans that the company has to offer. So again, we're going to look at two different general categories here in the upcoming slides and talk about sort of the nuances of each of them. But just generally speaking, if a company offers some form of retirement plan to their employees, it creates um, a competitive advantage, right? When they're trying to compete for talent out in the marketplace, um, it creates that competitive advantage if you're offering not just a salary, but these types of other, other kinds of benefits. So that's answering that question, why would an organization offer offer this type of pension or this type of retirement benefit to their employees. So now getting into the two general types of retirement plans, pension plans. So highlighted in blue, you can see that on the top, there is a defined contribution pension plan and on the bottom, a defined benefit pension plan. And so again, as is the case oftentimes when it comes to terminology used in accounting, um, we're not creative here, right? So if you just take the terminology at face value, you will understand sort of what the differences are between these two types of plans. So a defined contribution plan. So we are looking at this 
um, from the perspective of the company, of the business that has employees. So they are the employer. The business is the employer and they have employees and they are uh, providing them with some form of retirement benefit. In a defined contribution plan, the employer, just the company, essentially promises to set aside fi a fixed amount annually. So they will make contributions to a fund, but then that fund is managed by the employee itself. So you can see there that's underlined. It is the employee's responsibility to manage those investments. The employer sets aside money, puts it in the fund at the end of the period, and that is it. That is the end of the company's responsibility as it relates to a retirement plan. Then the employee is responsible for managing that fund, deciding what types of investments they want in that fund, and so on and so forth. So a good example of this is when um, a company is, and, and you'll, this is a common one that you'll, and there's, there's terminology that's on an upcoming slide, but a common form of defined contribution plan is a 401k. So a 401k is actually the type of, um, the type of uh, retirement benefit that Hiram College offers to their employees. And so what Hiram College says, and this is, this is similar amongst a variety of different organizations, industries, um, across the board, what oftentimes companies will do is they will promise to contribute a certain percentage of the employee's salary. So in, in this example, it says the employer is promising to contribute 5% of the employee's salary. So if you make $100,000, the employer is promising to set aside uh, five percent of that five thousand dollars in your retirement fund every period and now again that is where the responsibility for the company ends all they are required to do is contribute that amount to a fund and then they are done they are not responsible for anything beyond that it then becomes the employee's job to manage that fund so that they can um, essentially, you know, it's in their own hands how successful the investments are of that fund because it's all up to the employee how those funds are invested, how that money is invested. Once the employer makes their contribution, that's it. They're done. So that's why it's called a defined contribution plan versus a defined benefit plan. A defined benefit plan is when the employer, the company, is promising a set of fixed retirement benefits. So this is essentially where they're saying, okay, once these people, once this individual retires, we are going to pay them a certain annual salary as their retirement benefit. That is what the retirement benefit is going to be. So while the employee is working, right, um, they are essentially uh, accumulating time to say that they're earning more towards their defined benefit plan. Now, the employer is the sole body that is responsible. The company is, resp is responsible for ensuring that they have enough funds set aside so that they can pay out this promised retirement benefit. So it's not necessarily that they're promising contributions to a fund now, the company is promising a certain salary once that employee retires. So I'll give you an example. My husband works in public schools and they have a defined benefit pension plan and their pension plan is based on a formula as it says there in the second bullet point. There's usually a formula that's based on um, the employee's uh, uh, future salary, how long they've been working there, um, their age, how long they're expected to retire, all of that goes into this pension formula in some cases. So for instance, I don't know if this is 100% accurate, but just as an example, um, they will take uh, and, and say, okay, we will promise if an employee works for the next 30 years with our business, we will promise to pay them 75% of their uh, best earnings once they retire. So let's say that in the final year that the employee was working, their highest salary, the highest amount that they had ever made was $100,000. That company is essentially promising to pay them 75% um, of that salary 
in their retirement years. So every year they are promising that they are going to pay that person 75 grand. Every single year that's going to be what their retirement benefit is. So you can see the differences. In a defined contribution, all the employer, all the company has to do is periodically make a contribution to a fund. Then that fund is solely managed by the individual. The, the company has nothing to do with it. Once they've made the contribution, that's it. They're done. Their responsibility is over versus a defined benefit plan where the employer, the company, is actually promising a specific salary to that person once they retire. So all the risk, all the responsibility bears on that company because they are promising not just to make periodic contributions, they're promising that once that person retires, they're gonna pay them a certain amount of money every single year. So a defined benefit plan is gonna be the type of plan that essentially has uh, more risk that is bore by the company itself. That's what this next slide kind of talks about. What are the differences between the two? So um, there's been a, a large shift, uh, just generally speaking, there's been a large shift from defined uh, benefit plans to defined contribution plans. And the reason for that um, is listed on this slide, right? So first of all, there's a lot more government regulation surrounding defined benefit plans than there is for defined contribution plans. So for defined benefit plans, um, companies, first of all, you're gonna see that the accounting specifically for defined benefit plans is a lot more complex than that for defined contribution plans. But not only that, um, if a company has a defined benefit plan, they are um, going to be required by law to have a certain amount of funds set aside so that they can ensure, so that the company can ensure that they will have enough cash available to pay those employees the salary that they're promising them once they retire. So th there's a lot more gov government regulation because the government wants to ensure that companies hold up their promise, that if they promise to pay or if they're promising to pay a certain salary to that individual once they retire, they the government wants to make sure that they have enough money set aside, that the company has enough money set aside that they can do so. Secondly, as I mentioned before, employers are bearing a lot more risk when it comes to a defined benefit plan. They have to make sure that there's going to be enough cash available to pay those employees their retirement benefits. They have to, on an ongoing basis, reassess how much money they've set aside, reassess how much they believe to be the amount that they're going to have to owe to those employees once they retire. So there's a lot more risk um, for the company with a defined benefit plan versus a defined contribution plan. With a defined contribution plan, plan, there really is no risk for the company. The company just puts money into a fund that's then managed by the individual. It's managed by the employee, and that's it. They don't bear any risk. They're not making any promises beyond that contribution annually. And then lastly, just with the trend in employment nowadays, there is, um, you know, uh, uh, a there is a shift in what employees want when it comes to their retirement benefits. So, you know, maybe 30, 40 years ago, it was more prevalent that employees would have wanted that long-term promise that the employer, the company, is going to pay those retirements out into the future. But now the shift is that, you know, em uh, uh, individuals, especially now considering, you know, you hear those facts about how um, individuals, you know, sometimes change jobs 10, 10 different times within their career. So individuals out in the market now want a more flexible, want a more mobile pension plan. And so the thing with defined contribution plans, so I, I can give you a specific example. When I was working for Ernst & Young before starting my job here at Hiram, I had a 401k plan with um, Ernst & Young. I was very easily able to roll over that 401k plan once I started working for Hiram. And then instead of uh, Ernst & Young making contributions annually to my retirement fund, then it was just Hiram making those contributions. So it's a very easy, seamless rollover process when you switch from one company to the next. So that again makes the defined contribution plan a little bit more attractive in the marketplace now when it comes to what employees, what individuals are looking for with their retirement benefits. 
So what I'm going to finish up this first video with is just an, uh, an understanding of how we account for defined contribution plans. What you will find is that there are literally two slides in this PowerPoint deck that talk about defined contribution plans. The rest of the lecture is all about defined benefit plans. So again, this is another reason why there's been a shift from defined benefit to defined contribution. Defined contribution plans in terms of accounting is extremely simple to account for. Defined benefit plans, there's gonna be a lot more involved. There's gonna be a lot more that we have to keep track of. And so there's, it's just a more complex process. So again, I'm gonna end this first video with um, a, a, a conversation about focused on defined contribution plans and how we account for defined contribution plans. And then the upcoming videos, um, remaining videos related to chapter 17 are then gonna be um, describing how we account for defined benefit plans. So again, let's focus on defined contribution. This is the plan that is less risky for companies because all they are doing is promising to make periodic contributions to a fund and that fund is then managed by the individual, by the individual employee. So once the employer has made the contribution, that is it. They have no more responsibility as it relates to that pension fund. You can see that there are a variety of different types of defined contribution plans. Let me say first that they are all consistent in that all that the company is required to do is make that periodic contribution. But there's a variety of different forms that they can take. So I mentioned the 401k plan that, that Ernst & Young and then now Hiram offers. And what, what I'm able to do is I'm able to contribute parts of my own salary to that fund on a periodic basis. They take a percentage out of my paycheck and they put it into my 401k fund. I manage that fund, and in addition to my contribution, the employer also makes a contribution. So I contribute a certain percentage, and then e and y and Hiram was contributing a certain percentage. Now again, the idea though is that once that money is contributed by the employer, by the company, that's it. It then is on me as the individual employee to manage those funds. So I get to decide whether I want them to be aggressive or more conservative. I have complete control over what those, um, how those funds are invested. So the very simple way that we account for a defined contribution plan, again, we are taking the perspective of the company. We are not looking at this from the perspective of the individual employee. We are looking at this from the perspective of the company. How does the company account for a defined contribution plan? So in this example, we are gonna assume that there was an employee that earned $110,000 in the given accounting period, and the company, the employer, has promised that they will contribute 3% of that salary to the fund, to the pension fund. The only thing that that company has to do in their accounting records is record pension expense for the amount that they are going to be contributing. So the $3,300 is, is calculated by taking 3% of the $110,000. That is uh, debited to pension expense. And then the credit is simply to cash. That's going to come out of the company's operating account and go into the employee's pension fund. That is it. There is no additional liability created. There are no additional expenses related to it. When we talk about accounting for a defined contribution plan, it is as simple as recording a debit to pension expense and a credit to cash. That is it. So again, that's the end of the conversation when it comes to defined contribution plan. You may hear me bring it up, you know, uh, and for comparison purposes in upcoming videos, but as far as the accounting is concerned, this is it. The very basic journal entry that we make for a company who is contributing to their employees defined contribution plan is debit pension expense credit cash. The upcoming videos then for chapter 17 will all be focused on how we account for a defined benefit plan instead.